Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today I'm inside Lowe's checking out their spring bulb inventory. We're going to look at what they have available, what I've grown, whether I failed or succeeded with that, and I'm probably going to purchase at least a couple of things and so I'll show you a bulb haul at the very end. This is not my typical Lowe's, but I have noticed lately that a lot of the Lowe's have not had as much variety of bulbs as in the past. And I don't know if that's just a new trend for them or not. Now over here is all your vegetables and fruits. So they've got all of their seed potatoes over here, their onion starts. Um, shallots, asparagus, garlic, strawberries. Same thing over here, just a few different varieties. I'm not gonna talk about those today. We are gonna talk about flowers. And sadly enough, they only have this. And if you watched my Home Depot video, you know that Home Depot had like five times this amount. But let's take a look and see what we can find. Now over here, these are all bare roots and they look to be about one plant for $10. And I've always wanted to try some of these hydrangea ones. Now I will say a lot of these roots don't look super healthy. <clears throat> if I were to do it, I'd probably get one. See like that one has like the green, a little bit of green coming up. Probably stick with something like that. I've always wanted to try one of the hydrangea ones, Nico Blue, but I don't know if it's something that would grow well in my area as I'm not overly familiar with these varieties. It says full sun to partial shade, but if you live in Texas, you know that full sun is a whole different, you know, <laughs> ball game here. But yeah, I mean, maybe that's something it might be fun to try out this year. So they have the Trumpet Vine Orange, which can be considered invasive in my area. It has the PG Pink Hydrangea, Nico Blue, and the Honeysuckle Red. Now down here, we have the Viburnum Japanese Snowball. And I did plant this. And I have, I planted it a few years ago. I have a large, beautiful plant that has never flowered <laughs> for me. I did a little research of why it might not be flowering. And it said basically that Potentially, I have it in too much shade. So this position says full sun to partial shade. Height is 8 to 12 feet tall. Spacing 10 to 12 feet. Has planting up. Its cold hardiness is non-hardy in zones 1 through 2. So, but yes, I do have this. And a lot of people, when they see it, they're like, oh, that's not a Japanese um, viburnum. But, I mean, that's what it said. That's what the leaves look like. When I grind, I'll have to show you guys that at a later point in time. But yeah, I had successful starting it. It's absolutely beautiful. The greenery is gorgeous, but no blooms. I would say it's about five feet tall right now. Now, for Cynthia, is also something that I have been wanting to start. This one is called Linwood Gold. And it's something that is going to bloom during the earliest points in spring, almost late winter, beginning of spring. And this takes full sun, early spring, vibrant color. And then once it blooms, these yellow flowers, it all just kind of turns to a nondescript green shrubbery, which is my major hesitation for planting for, for Cynthia is that I just don't think it's attractive once it's bloomed. Also have wisteria over here. Wisteria is considered invasive in our area, so I have not planted it before. Okay, so the main difference I'm seeing they have a lot of different things compared to Home Depot. So that's nice. This whole top shelf is clematis. So exciting. We actually talked about the Jackmani in my last video, but look at, let's look at some of the other varieties. We have the Warsaw Nike, which I have not grown, but I really love like the brightness of the center and the darkness of the outside. 
this one, Nellie Moser, looks like a variety that I grow. I think my variety is called Dr. Rupal, but I could be wrong. I'll put it below and I'll put up a comparison picture. But I've had a lot of success with growing the clematis from the roots. Um, it takes a while. It's definitely not a like ready in a year thing. It did bloom pretty quickly, but um, they're all still pretty small, even though this will be their third year coming up. I do like this Belle de the walking kind of a pale pink lavender color this venosa um, violacea ernest markham and miss bateman i like the miss bateman a lot that would look really pretty in my shade garden so coming down here to a still bee i have grown a still bee from um plants from roots and it did not do well in my area I just had a hard time with the heat um, it, it was kind of a mess but if you are able to get this to grow it is absolutely beautiful now I used to grow a ton of daylilies I used to love them until my focus turned more to cut flowers and once I turned to cut flowers the daylilies just they're day lilies like they're really only bloom for about 24 hours and so they just didn't really work as well for me for cut flowers so I don't currently plant them anymore but if you want something that's going to give you lots of color, this is something you want to do. Definitely daylilies. Fern, and this might actually be fun to start this year, considering that I now have a shade garden. So partial to full shade, summer to fall foliage, great for borders. Let's see, it's a height 24 to, this is a mama, this is a big old fern. So 24 to 36 inches tall. That is too big for my needs. Now, Leatris, I have grown for several years, super easy to plant. You get blooms the very first year. It's an inexpensive um, bulb or um, corm. I mean, I, I even be a rhizome. I apologize. I don't know the exact name of it. These are great, full sun, and you get this beautiful, beautiful um, uh, feather looking thing that's actually known as a gay feather is its other um, name but liatches is really fun does great in the north texas area very drought tolerant i did split mine up this year so i will be replanting them i've not tried lily of the valley here's another garden amaryllis if you are wanting to start some amaryllis inside you can force these bulbs now I've also grown hollyhocks from root. I no longer grow them from root. Um, I also grew them from seed. I no longer grow them from seed as well. I ripped all of them out. Reason being is they get this really bad like rust fungus over and over and over again. And y'all know how I am. I just, it's survival of the fittest in my garden. So I just, <laughs> I got rid of them. Now here we have three, four different varieties of peonies. So, I actually have tried, let's see, I've tried Sarah Bernhardt and killed it twice. <laughs> I've tried Alexander Fleming and that is currently in my garden and it's still alive. So maybe this will do well. I don't have a lot of luck with growing them from um, these kind of plants right here, um, almost like tubers, I feel like. Uh, I don't have a lot of luck growing peonies that way it seems like buying these takes a good three to five years to actually establish the peony so i think if i want to add any peonies to my garden i would splurge and buy the full plant because even though i don't mind waiting sometimes i feel like with the peonies i want it right then <laughs> these are absolutely beautiful 32 to 36 inches and you know full sun to partial shade i believe partial shade does better in the um in Texas area but with these you definitely have to make sure that you don't plant them too deep if you plant them too deep they will not flower it's a whole thing to be able to plant them in the North Texas area if you're someone who's able to grow peonies in this area I would love for you to comment below what varieties and what tips you have for the rest of us okay so a little disappointed about what was available at Lowe's I could be too early there could be more coming I will say what was good about it is the things that Lowe's had are things that Home Depot didn't have. So that works out really well. So let's talk about what I ended up choosing. I ended up choosing three varieties of clematis. Um, I didn't think that that was what I was going to end up going for, but 
I really liked the look of them and I really wanted to show you all how easy it is to pot up bare root clematis. So let's talk about the three varieties I got and then I will go through the simple process of getting these potted up and show you what I do to get them to go ahead and get started before the spring comes. This is a really fun way to bring a little bit of gardening into your life when it's still winter outside. Okay, so the first variety I call is I uh, got is Clematis uh, de Woking or Walking. Um, it is full sun to partial shade, early summer bloomer, and continuous color. It says it's height, it is about six to nine feet tall. Its spread is about 24 to 48 inches wide. Its cold hardiness is negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think this is a really soft, kind of pinkish tone, but also has a little bit of lavender tone and it looks like a double, which is absolutely beautiful. The next variety I got is called Jackmani. And that's when I kind of talked to you guys about there. It is a tried and true in this area. And I'm really wanting to start this one and plant it at the base of my Don Juan climbing rose, which is red. And I love the idea of using the climbing rose as a trellis for the clematis. And clematis and roses do brilliantly together. So this is definitely one of those areas where you can layer two plants to get longer lasting blooms in that particular area. Now the Jack Money is just a beautiful, bold purple tone. It is not a double flower, it's a single, but absolutely prolific bloomer. Full sun to part shade, early summer bloomer, continuous color. Its height is 12 to 20 feet tall. Its spread is 24 to 48 inches wide, and it is hardy negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is gonna be really fun to try out. And the last variety I picked up, I think that this variety is actually gonna end up going into the um, shade garden. And this one is called Ernest Markham. And it's kind of like a wine kind of color. Um, I wouldn't call it a true red. I think it has a little bit more more pink in it than from what I'm looking at here. It's full sun to part shade, early summer bloomer, con uh, continuous color. Its height is eight to 12 feet tall. Spa um, it's spa <laughs> its width is 24 to 48 inches and it is cold hardy, negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think this one is actually going to go in the shade garden. So you might be asking, Amanda, why are you getting these started now? Why, why don't you just plant them directly out in the ground right now? Okay, well, it's too cold and we could go through some dramatic freezes before these bare roots have the opportunity to put on enough root growth outside in order to survive the cold. So that's why they're not going out there right this moment. And then you might also be asking, well, why don't you just wait till spring and then plant them? Like, why are we doing this twice? Well, the right reasoning behind that is I'm trying to give these a little bit of a jump on spring. I would like to have a more established plant that's already got a really great root system going on before I plant them outside. You can absolutely wait till spring on these. A couple of reasons I don't want to wait for spring though is like I said, I want to get a jump on the growth, but also these roots can dry out in these bags and have difficulty. So the sooner you purchase these bare roots and go ahead and get them potted up and started, the better it's going to be for the quality of the plant in the future. Instead of just holding on to these for the next two months, allowing them to continue to dry out since they're not in any kind of moist soil. Um, and then you might not have as productive of a plant come this spring when you plant it. Now, one of the benefits of planting clematis from bare root is the cost. It's very inexpensive, which I love that because typically if you're going to buy a well-rooted clematis plant that's in a larger container, I mean, a lot of the ones I see are minimum $50 and more upwards of $75 to $100. Now, that is a lot of money for me, but one of the big benefits of spending that extra money is you already have a big, nice plant. These clematis are going to take two to three years to get to their full scale and full height. They might not bloom the first year. It really just depends on your location and how happy they are in their spot. But full blooming size is minimum two to three growing seasons after you plant it. Now, a few things about growing clematis. Clematis prefer what we call cool feet or cold feet. I always think of cold feet because it's like the whole wedding thing. 
they like for their root area to be nicely shaded and covered, but they don't necessarily want all of this, um, all the flowers nicely shaded and covered. They can handle some partial shade, but they definitely want their root system area shaded and covered. That can be done with a couple of things. You can do a heavy mulching to kind of keep that area moist or protect it from any kind of drought. You can also underplant with some really great annuals or low growing perennials, which also cast shade over the root system. And that is just something that's very unusual about um, clematis, but also very fun. So like if I were to put this in like a pot, put this in the center of the pot with a beautiful trellis, I probably would surround the base with something fun like a creeping thyme or a lissom or something along those lines that would provide shade around the base of the clematis as opposed to just having the bare soil. Now, bare roots are best planted in fall and spring. I find that my fall is really, really hot. So when I say fall for me, I probably wouldn't plant until very end of October into November for my fall. Um, I tend to plant most of my bare root in the spring. And I think it's because I literally forget. I am just go rushing into the holidays and I don't think to pull on my bare roots and get them prepared at that time of the fall. So after the holidays, I have more time to think about it. And that's when I typically remember that hey let me get my bare roots started now clematis is definitely cold hardy however extreme extended freezing temps will damage it somewhat but most likely won't kill it there are chances that it could die back to the ground most clematis will regrow on um, the structures that it's grown the year before but definitely if you're having some extreme extended temps you might want to mulch around the base just to make sure you're protecting the mulch of uh, the root system Okay, let's open up these bare roots, see what they look like, and talk about the next steps in the process. All right, let's start with the Jackmani. All right, so the root, bare root has been packed in soil, so I'm just going to very carefully pull around here, and here we go. You can see it's almost like a little plug. Because it was grown and then harvested and then stored in a warm um, box store like Lowe's, it's already begun sprouting. So um, that's really cool. I can also see that the roots are nice uh, yellowy orange tone, which is definitely the color that clematis roots should be. If they are dark or brown, that means that they are dead. You also want to make sure that these roots are nice and pliable, and these definitely feel nice and pliable. Now, if the root did not feel pliable, if they felt you know stiff or didn't feel good, you could definitely put these in a um, bowl of water and soak them for 20 minutes. I think that's what we will do today, not because they are overly dry, just because I want to show you what that process looks like. Okay, so I've got three bowls. I'm going to take whatever variety it is and put that underneath it and then put each of my individual roots in their own bowl. I'm not putting them all in the same because I don't want to get confused which one is which. And this one already has growth points as well, which is really great because it makes it easier to tell where and how to plant these. <clears throat> Here's another one. See the orangey yellow tone roots? Nice and pliable. Everybody looks good. All right, let's submerge these in water and allow them to soak for 20 minutes. So I, for I forgot to press play and <laughs> already potted one of them up. Okay. So here's what we're doing. I'm starting with a nice basic um, potting mix. This is my Burger BM7 potting soil and I love it. I'm also reusing a gallon size uh, nursery pot right here. Now clematis roots don't like to be disturbed too much. So you wanna start with a larger pot, like a gallon size here, so that you don't have to pot it up or move it up to another container prior to having to put it out in the garden. You can just grow it in this can for the entire time until spring and then plant this out into the garden. So so what I want to do is I'm going to fill this up with a, maybe um, a third of the potting soil and then I do want to add a little bit of nutrients because my clematis is going to be in here for a couple of months. So I am adding just a handful of compost and then I'm mixing it in with the soil down here and I just had a bag of compost behind me. All right. 
So now we've got our pot about halfway filled up at this point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bare root, which has been soaking for about 20 minutes. Now we are looking for the crown of the plant. The crown of the plant is basically what where the plant meets the soil and begins to flare out you can actually use your finger and it's going to be really hard for y'all to see because it's so small but i can come down here and i can touch and i can actually feel how the plant begins to flare out under the surface of the soil so that is where our crown is right there the crown of the plant we want the crown of the clematis plant to be about two inches below the surface of the soil so we're looking at about this distance below the surface of the soil. So we may, after we bury this, we might barely see this or not at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and nestle it down into the pot just like that. And I'm gonna kind of hold it upright as I begin to work soil around it. But I wanna make sure that the crown of the plant is buried two inches below the soil. I'm gonna get it a nice soft pat just like that, not overly hard, but just firm up the soil a little bit and there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and plant one more. So we're gonna fill it about a fourth of the way with some potting soil. I'm gonna grab some compost back here. I'm gonna mix it in with the potting soil down low. And now we're about halfway filled at this point. I'm gonna take my bare root just like that. Look how healthy and beautiful that is. You can actually see, because some of the soil has come away from this one right here, you can actually get a really good viewpoint of the crown of the plant right there where it starts to flare out to all the roots. We want to make sure the crown right here is two inches below the surface of the soil. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck it in just like that. And I'm going to start covering it up gently with my potting mix. And I'm just gonna firm it up a little bit, make sure it's nice and holding the plant in place. Easy peasy. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create labels for them. Okay, easy peasy. So at this point, we wanna go ahead and water, and I am gonna water it from the top on these because I do wanna make sure I settle any kind of air pockets that they might have. I've also got them in a water, uh, water reservoir to catch any water that's coming out below. Now, if you have a um, greenhouse, so you could put this in your greenhouse as long as the temperatures don't get too intense in your greenhouse. Um, I'm going to be storing mine inside. If you have a seed set up anywhere, you could be begin storing them there if you would like. I'm going to have mine semi under lights but not fully under lights at this point in time i'm also going to go ahead and throw in this extra water and allow that to soak up from the bottom because i don't want to waste this water so i'm going to be storing mine here in my seed room i'm actually going to have them directly under this table for now this table does not have lights underneath it but it does get ambient lights from the other lighting in this room i do have an upcoming video where i'm installing lights underneath this table for my larger plants such as something like a clematis so once i have that installed they will be getting light every day and they should really start putting on some growth i am not stressed about seeing a ton of growth up high maybe a little bit of green coming up that would be great i'm more worried and concerned about these clematis building root systems and that's all going to be happening where you can't see it so that's all going to be happening under the surface of the soil and that's really what we're trying to get them to do not to produce all this beautiful greenery yet but we really wanted to focus on making lots of wonderful roots so we have a stronger and better plant going out into the garden this spring now if you have a front porch or a garage you can also just tuck these away just make sure that they don't fully um, dry out that's what's really important but um, these 
don't necessarily need light to begin uh, growing roots. They just need a little bit of warmth. We don't want it to be super, super cold, um, a little bit of warmth. So, you know, even if it's in the forties and fifties, that's better than it being like in freezing or below. Um, but like I said, you can put them in a greenhouse, your porch, your garage, or like me, I'm just going to tuck them into my seed room. And then, like I said, you want to make sure they're well watered, not waterlogged. You don't want to water so much that you have them sitting in water for days and days. Just, you don't want to fill up your container where you just have standing water for more than 24 hours, but you do want to keep them moist and not dried out. All right, so I'm super excited. It'll be really fun to start three new varieties. I am also looking for some additional clematis. I'm waiting for Costco by me to get all of its spring bulbs in. I hope they should be there in the next week or so. Once those come in, I hope to pick up some clematis from there because you can get usually about four plants for like less than 15 bucks, which is amazing. Um, but I really like the varieties I chose and I like the colors. And this is really going to add to um, the dramatic or whimsical quality of my garden. And then this is also going to hit one of my goals, which is to continue to grow upwards, to utilize higher parts in my garden. And working with vines like this should work beautifully. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, seeing what Lowe's had available, even though it wasn't very much, and planting up these three bare root clematis. Let me know if you have grown clematis or clematis. Clematis sounds way prettier, but clematis, I'm Southern. But uh, let me know if you've grown clematis from bare root and what your results have been. My, this is my third round of clematis from root. I killed my first round. My second round is doing great. It's going into its third season. Um, and so it definitely did not bloom its first season. It bloomed a lot last year, which is great. So I really hope that this next year it will um, bloom quite a bit more. And so I'm really excited to get these going, even though it takes longer, but it's cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper to do it this way and I'll have to wait, but truthfully, isn't a lot of gardening just waiting, having patience? It really is. And that's definitely something that I don't naturally have. So I definitely think gardening helps me <laughs> with that attribute. <laughs> all right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel every time you leave me a comment. Even if it's just a sweet emoji, it helps build the quality and um, the breadth of my channel. And then also make sure you check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.